Okay, so in the previous video, uh, we identified that bolt number one was the bolt that we uh, felt was going to um, have the largest amount of load that was going to be applied onto it. Um, the only way to really be sure is to actually analyze each one of these bolts independently. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is to try to find out this force um, FT1 and um, I'll start off by explaining the relationship that we'll use first. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you have done a strength of materials paper before. Uh, so what that means is um, you've seen the relationship uh, shear stress is equal to uh, torque times radius divided by J. Now in this uh, relationship, we have J, which is your uh, polar moment of area. We have R, which is uh, the distance from the centroid. Uh, t, uh, t, which is your, your torque. Uh, measured in newton meters, and then uh, this value here, which is your uh, sh your stress, your shear stress. Um, now, your polar moment of area, um, that's been calculated from uh, an equation that looks something like this. Um, it's the integral of the distance away from the center of some kind of object squared. Um, with respect for each little piece of area. And so uh, for a piece of circle, something like this, yeah, this, well, well, bad circle, um, we could take a little piece of area over here. Um, that's got some kind of cross-sectional area, say a DA. Um, it's got some kind of distance, R, away from that point. Um, and we could calculate this um, value of J by adding up all of the little um, R squared values for each piece of area around that. Uh, maybe a circle. Um, for us, um, all we have is um, our five different points. So one, two, three, four, five different points. Um, they're all based around some kind of center here. And now for each one of our five points, uh, they all have a certain distance r away. So this would be r1. This is r2. That distance there is r3. This one would be r4. And then this distance here would be equal to R5. Um, so our next thing that we're going to be doing is, well, we could calculate this distance R and square it. Uh, we'll be able to calculate something that looks like um, what we have here as J. Um, R would be the distance away from the centroid. Uh, tau is torque, and then we can calculate the stress. Now, the point of this equation was that we um, could make an assumption that stress depends on how far away we are from the center, and that's something that's been proven within experiments. We have a similar uh, equation that we can use. It uh, looks like this. Um, if uh, t for whichever item we're looking, so this could be like number one or number two, um, is equal to the torque which is being applied onto our object, multiplied by the distance away for that particular bolt, um, divided by the sum of R squared for each one of these items. So that would be equal to, um, so sum of R squared would be equal to R1 squared plus R2 squared plus R3 squared, R4 squared, and R5 squared. All right, so the next thing that we're going to look at is, well, we need to find out what each one of these values of R um, are equal to, and then we can add them together to find out R squared, and then we'll use that within this formula. All right, so next step. Uh, from the diagram that we have before, we can have a look at um, R1, and for R1, we have uh, this distance here equal to 100, and this distance here equal to uh, 30. So I can find out the distance R1, which is between those two fingers, because that would be equal to 100 squared plus 30 squared, all square rooted, using, um, using Pythagoras. All right, so um, we have the relationship R1 squared is equal to 100 squared plus 30 squared, and we can find out this value. 
Got to replace it at some point. 100 squared plus 30 squared. So 10,900. And the units millimeters squared. All right, so we can do the same thing for number two. Um, number two is pretty straightforward. It's just this distance here, 30. And um, well, that distance squared, and um, we'll get our value for um, R2 squared. For R3, um, it's just uh, actually a mirror image of this. So actually what we see is that um, R1 squared and R3 squared are actually the same thing. So um, R3 squared equal to 100 squared plus 30 squared. You'll chuck that in your calculator and you should get the same number as what we got above. R4 squared. So uh, here's our diagram. And there's bolt number four. Uh, bolt number four has got uh, this height here, which would be equal to uh, 75 minus 30. Um, so 75 minus 30, 45. That distance there is equal to 45. And then this one here would be equal to 50. So 50 over here, and then this distance here equal to 45. All right, so we can get 45 squared plus 50 squared, and then that will get us the hypotenuse uh, value squared. And that's 4525 millimeters squared. All right, so from all of those, we can find out uh, the sum of R squared. Uh, that will be equal to 10900. Um, We've got two of those. Um, we've got, so R1 and R3, they're the same. Um, R2, which is 900. And then R4 and R5, they're the same. So it's going to be 4525 um, plus another 4525, or I can just multiply by 2. Okay. So... 1090 So um, our focus was on bolt number one. So what we can do here is uh, try to find out FT1. So FT1. Will be equal to the torque that's applied across that section. We found that out to be 3900 Newton meters. Um, multiplied by the distance R away. So in this case, it'll be equal to um, the distance R1. We found out the square of R1 to be equal to this. So here I can write down um, the square root of 10900. This will give us a value in millimeters. Maybe we should change that back to meters. So to change it to meters, I need to, let's see, so 10900, square root of that. So that value there will be in millimeters, and we should change that to meters. So we do that by uh, dividing by 1,000. And then down the bottom here will be our R squared value. Um, so 31750. Uh, we'll change that into meters squared. So that's times 10 to the minus 6. Okay. And then so now we can try to calculate that value. 
So 3900 zero, zero, times the square root of 1090. Zero, zero. To the negative 3, let's do it this way. And then all of that divided by 31750 exp minus 6. Okay. So now I've got the amount of force acting on that particular bolt. Um, FT1, and so that value is equal to um, 128 uh, 24 newtons. Okay, in the next video, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, combine these two forces to try to uh, find the resultant force, and that will allow us to find the maximum load acting on the bolt. Okay, so um, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, goodbye for now.